Hello everybody, this is Joe from the F-Stops here, and today I'm going to be showing you four things that will never leave the My Menu tab in my A7R4. So let's go. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we're talking about uh, the Sony A7R system. Uh, with my camera, it's the A7R Mark IV, but the tips today can work with the A7 Mark III, the A7C. You get the idea. Uh, everything we do here is brought to you by the F-Stops here. We're the creators of the Photography Cheat Sheets. We're the authors of three books on photography and a host of some other things. And so Camera Lessons Online is our platform to talk about cameras and menus and make the world of hobby photography accessible to everybody. And so today I wanted to talk about the My Menu tab. That's the star tab on the top right uh, of the screen where you can put whatever you want into your own menu pages. And they can be pretty much as many pages as you want. Um, and I want to tell you things that are so important to me that they will never leave the My Menu tab. So um, we can just scroll around here um, and go to the My Menu tab that you see here. And we're going to talk about each one of these four things in turn. Uh, but the My Menu tab, you can just find anything that you want throughout the menu system and put it into pages. And so you can, as you can see here, add items. Uh, you can change their order. You can delete them, delete whole pages. You can wipe the whole thing clean. Um, uh, but really what we want to talk about today are the things that I find uh, incredibly useful to have because the My Menu uh, tab allows you to quickly get to things that you want to change regularly. And I think the first thing that every Sony camera should have in the My Menu uh, page is the format option where you can format your memory cards. Uh, Sony, I think, kind of made a mistake with their menu layout uh, where format is buried in the middle of the toolbox uh, icon. It's always in one of the middle pages, halfway down, not easy to find, but formatting your memory cards is something that uh, I recommend and, and I do at the beginning of a new shoot and every time I've finished offloading my data. So it really should be more easily accessible. Uh, I like what Canon does. Uh, they, it's very easy to find with them. With Nikon, you can actually format memory cards by pushing two buttons simultaneously on top of their cameras. I think that's really useful. So I like to place that first. Um, and I would do that with any Sony camera. So you're going to see three things that I always have inside of my menu beyond that. Uh, the next one is autofocus with shutter. Now this is actually how you turn on something that's called back button focusing, which is where the shutter mechanism of your, uh, the shutter button, sorry, uh, of your camera does not also focus. So autofocus with shutter is asking the question of whether or not your camera is going to focus when you push the shutter release button down. Now, some people get really, really into this and say there's no way to shoot other than back button focusing. Some people say they could never get used to it. Um, I have been a back button shooter for a couple years now, but uh, it's by no means my religion. And so... Um, Whenever I'm shooting with my camera, I like to have this uh, turned off, which means that the shutter mechanism or the, uh, the uh, shutter release button will not uh, pull focus. So that would be set to the off position. So no autofocusing with shutter. However, sometimes I'll take my camera and I'll hand it to a student or I'll hand it to my wife to take pictures when the family is out. And so I want to quickly be able to take the camera and turn that back on. Because if you have back button focusing turned on and you hand your camera to somebody else uh, to take a picture of you, um, they likely won't think to push the AF on button on the back of the camera. Uh, so I like to have that easily accessible. The next thing is silent shooting. Now, silent shooting is super powerful with uh, modern-day mirrorless cameras, but we don't want to always use it. As you probably know, when you turn on silent shooting, you are more likely to incur rolling shutter issues, and you are also uh, more likely to incur banding. Banding is when the scanning of the sensor matches up with the flickering of a man-made light. If those two things kind of line up in their speed, 
then you're going to see light and dark bands uh, across your images. It's called banding. And there's really no way of editing that out of an image. It's just there, and there's nothing you can do about it. And so silent shooting is super useful for shooting wildlife or shooting anything where you're part of an activity, um, where you're very close to shooting an activity where you don't want to draw attention. So wedding photographers rely on this. There are a lot of good times to use silent shooting, but if you are going to be shooting and you are turning the camera quickly and you might incur rolling shutter, or if you're in a situation where you might have banding issues, then being able to turn this off quickly is very useful. Um, so the last setting that I always keep in my menu is the live view display. I don't like the description of this in the menu um, where it's just setting effect on and setting effect off. But this is something that uh, studio photographers use. So if you are uh, working with setting effect on, uh, Panasonic likes to call this constant preview. Uh, this is where the viewfinder and the screen give you an accurate representation of what the exposure of your shot will look like. Um, and that's super useful, right? So you can make exposure decisions as you operate, knowing basically what the shot's going to look like. The problem is if you connect studio lighting to your uh, camera, particularly non-TTL studio lighting, um, then this doesn't know what to do, and your screen just pretty much goes black. Uh, in a studio setting and you really can't operate. And so taking your setting effect and going into it and turning it off gives you a generic uh, bright image that's not representative of what the image will look like. And so when I do studio work, I will take setting effect and turn it off, but I leave it on the rest of the time. So those are four settings that I really need in my menu. Now you can have as many things inside of the My Menu tab as you want. Uh, you can order them in whatever way that you want, and sometimes I'll add other things and take others out. But these four things are always in my menu with my Sony cameras. Anyway, I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you next time.